Hello everybody, it's SD Matt Haven here today. And I wanted to go over Boomtown. Boomtown, they recently decreased the time uh, required to be able to complete it. From I believe 7.40 down to 7.03 or 6 minutes and 50 seconds. Can't remember the exact time, but they decreased it, which makes it even harder to go through. So, hopefully this little guide and possibly build setup for your Devastator can help you complete it. I understand that yes, I'm running tier 3 mods, I have a legendary gun, a couple of my setups, it's going to be hard to achieve, but even if you go to my past video, it can still help you out. You don't need the three earthquakes to be able to complete Boomtown, you can still use the double and probably even use Impel, Boulder's Charge. Gravity Leap's going to be a real big one because of the relocating ability that that perk offers. Or that skill offers. But starting off, we're running Fortress. So based upon the armor, we can get up to 43 additional damage. We're also using improved bleeding rounds in those rounds. And just a heads up. Um, your attributes for your weapons whenever you're playing as a Devastator. Weapon, Life, Leech, and Status Power, I highly recommend. Um, skill, Life, Leech, or basically whatever other one that you want to get. You can even get close range damage to increase your weapon damage at close quarters. But I have found that Skill Life Leech is one of the better ones to go for. Up next, we have the, the Imploder, which is a legendary gun that has two Tier 3 traits. So we have Deadly Disturbance, activates upon a critical shot, dealing 222,000, and Ultimate Bone Shrapnel. It has the same effect for critical shots for 203,000. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people run the comment and everyone says the comment is the best one to run but in my opinion having a gun that you don't need to reload to be able to get the effect of a trait so like the jugular for instance having a grand opening and scrap grenade scrap grenade on console is a little bit broken and depending on the cutscene that you go into it can cancel out your scrap grenade and it will not activate so for me the critical hits or even just pure damage it's extra damage that you can throw out uh, next time I get the imploder, I'm probably just going to be throwing fortress on it and calling it good. But the problem is, is that it doesn't have a status, a stat power bonus, so it's 30% less towards your bleeds. Uh, the pistol, well, it's basically just there in case I need to use it. But I use my pistol to get bleed on enemies from a long range, just to be able to keep my health regenerating. Now on my uh, headgear, which uh, I did replace my Ronin hat for going back to an older piece of equipment because it uh, complemented the build a lot more. We're doing Inflix Bleed um, by enemies damaged by the skill for Bloodshock Earthquake. Probably one of the best ones to have. Power Assimilation, absolutely gnarly. The more captains that they're on the field, the stronger you become. Um, up next, we are running the Seismic Commander Set Bonus Increased Damage Towards Enemies with Bleed by 50%. So, use Melee. Melee is a really big part of of the Devastator in my opinion, so you always want to get that class, get the extra 100% melee, because it's just going to help you out a crap ton, because using melee, you're going to put bleed on the opponent, and then you can use all three of your earthquakes, two of your earthquakes, or whatever you're using, and it's going to do 50% more damage. Not just that, the status power, your bleeds also, you'll see a tick for let's say like 13,000, and then the secondary tick will jump up to about 20,000 to 24,000 depending on how much bleed bonus damage you are running. Untamed Power. Uh, this trait is absolutely fantastic. Using skills deals 38,000 damage. Uh, one of the best parts about that is that Untamed Power actually goes off of Power Assimilation, and it also goes off of my Golem. So whenever I activate Golem, my Anomaly Power is going to go up, the more Captains on the field, this trait goes up. I have seen this trait by itself hit for 200,000 each time I've used a skill, which is just additional damage. And for how close quarters you can get with the Devastator, it is amazing to have that. It's a tier two trait and I will probably never replace it. Earth's Legacy increased skills range by 60% for Earthquake. I highly recommend to use that just because Earthquake doesn't exactly have the greatest range. So trying to squeeze out as much as you can to hit as many targets in front of you as you can. If you're running the Bleed Hill setup, it is probably one of the best traits to have. If you have to sacrifice damage over range, I would say go for the range rather than the damage, just because the range is just that good. Jumping down to the pants, we have Tainted Blood, which Tainted Blood, keep in mind, does come on the Seismic Commander Legs Armor. 
I had a couple people in the last video ask me, where did I get that trait? Well, Seismic Commander Legs, that's how you get it. Second Quake comes off of the boots for the Seismic Commander set. So, being able to activate a third Quake, it is absolutely amazing having three of those. Up next, we're using Captain Hunter to increase damage against Elites and uh, Ground Crush to increase the skill's base damage by 84,000. On the booties here, we're running Damage Absorber. Highly recommend to be using this. That's actually helping out Fortress on the primary light machine gun. Now, going over all the attributes, we're running Cooldown Reduction, Status Power, Anomaly Power as much as we can. So, Cooldown Status Anomaly, Cooldown Status Anomaly, and the Commander Gloves. I'm going to be replacing this whenever I get the chance because I want to try and get my hands on Cooldown Anomaly and Status Power. Once I do that, my Earthquake I'll be able to use every single 6.4 seconds, but at the same time, I don't see the benefit. But the Anomaly Power, I do see the benefit of the Anomaly Power. Right now, my Earthquake is on a 7.1 cooldown. Now, coming over... Oh, 6.7. Never mind. It, somehow, it went up a little bit. Okay, Earthquake, Golem, and Gravity Leap. Gravity Leap, we're using as a relocating ability, and occasionally, we use it for damage. The Class of the Tree, if you guys want to pause, go ahead, be my guest. Check it out and do it if you feel like you want to do it. But one of the biggest ones I recommend is Paladin. Using protection skills increases anomaly power by 45% for 10 seconds. That's just going to increase all of your damage across the board. Whenever you activate Golem, you're using that as an offensive trait. Get in their face, activate it to use Untamed Power to get that to go off as well. Strong Armor of the Law. Your melee has a really fast recharge time. I enjoy using my melee a lot. Melee with Untamed Power combined is absolutely devastating and now let's go ahead and jump right into the recording here i had to download this from twitch i kind of had a blonde moment i didn't exactly mean to start streaming i meant to start a recording but i wasn't paying attention and i clicked stream so i made a mistake it happens though so starting off um playing as devastator you want to try and plan your earthquakes as much as you can if you saw, the first one went off to the right, then the second one went off to the left. And that's just to get the bleed going as much as we can. So the extra 25% damage against captains. Earthquake hit that captain for 627,000. That trait is absolutely amazing. And then stacking bleed on top of it, it's just nothing but bonus damage against captains. Using the light machine gun for downtime, because we have weapon life leech, and with the large magazine capacity, it really allows us to be able to get some health back and not worry about reloading the clip a little bit too often and right there being a little bit of a blonde with my aim because i've been way more focused on using abilities as much as i can now the cutthroats on this map you don't really need to worry about them too much um they're not going to be your main priority to take down as quick as you can they will more than likely follow you all over the map using melee to try and get the bleed effect on the riflemen through the wall doing the same thing to this one as well and that's just so then you get the bleed you get the extra 75% damage that you're running if you're running 75% damage gravity leap just a little bit of extra damage not just that gravity leap kind of acts like a damage canceller if you want to try and get a little bit of health back activate gravity leap but do not use it you can use it as a defensive trait and an offensive trait if needed against some boss fights going through the campaign I found gravity leap to be absolutely a requirement just because they would come in for a really strong attack and you could just activate gravity leap and avoid all damage that was coming your way so if you guys are struggling with your devastators gravity leap you can use as a defensive trait and an offensive trait now focusing out the captains on the left side and all the troops on the left side um, those ones like the spawn end they only have a to spawn cycle so once they're down you can just basically ignore them up next i was spending a little bit of time on this captain i feel like i should have avoided him and then i saw the opportunity to line up a couple earthquakes against the guys up top and hit the captain all at the same time it's all about finding positions to be able to use your skills as much as you can and that right there was one of them that you could really get your hands on now Earthquake has actually got quite the range and the ability with the width, so 
how far it can hit in front of you. So if you plan out, you can actually... It's, it's almost like a giant cone in front of you. You may see the earthquake on the ground coming out. Uh, it's actually a lot larger than that. It just it hits so much in front of it. It's not even funny. And then with the melee, if you actually set it up correctly, your melee can be hitting for over 500,000 per hit. But taking away a couple of trades. So taking away Captain Hunter to throw in the extra melee damage, depending on if you're running with the team or not, can be really beneficial. Untamed power to hit all the guys behind you each time you're using a skill. Because you want to focus out the captains. You're not really worried about the small guys. But you want to make sure that you get the small guys inside the attack. So, bleeds right now, we're, we're seeing some 40,000s, 27,000s, a couple others. We're trying to get the Earthquake down on the Rifleman right there, and I fell down, which does decrease my time on this. If I would have not fallen down, I would have had a little bit of a faster time on this run. But with the extra range, we were able to hit that Rifleman that was down low. So within noise? 3 minutes and 53 seconds, we're already moving on to the last room. Now, if you are running three Earthquakes, this this is something I, I recommend to do. You're going to do one to the left, one down the middle, one to the far right. And then using Gravity Leap, you're going to want to try and hit the guy in the back. Now, if you're only using two Earthquakes, you can get all those targets within one and two Earthquakes. With one Earthquake, it's not going to happen. But with two of them, you can hit everyone in the middle. As long as you have the range. Using Gravity Leap, get some extra damage out of there. Hit a couple of the captains were not in range, so we kind of lost out on a little bit of damage. Take out the guy further back, using one, going through all three, trying to plan out as much as we can to get time down as much as we can. And focusing out the captain. Keep it, Keeping track of your map as well is going to really help you out. Now, your skills, you need to use all of them to get the recharge going. And on Boomtown, I have noticed that whenever you're versing the captain or you're versing an end game guy and it goes through a cutscene, for some reason your abilities don't regenerate, so it's best to use them all. Now, right here at the very end, this is something I've been doing. I've been testing out some of the mechanics. I made an earthquake coming to the back because I thought that they were coming from the back watching the minimap. But if you actually sit behind one of the pillars, the captains will start moving up because they need field of view. They need to be able to see you to deal damage, so they're going to get close to deal damage. Riflemen, on the other hand, they will just sit around and not do anything. Because they're so good, and they're great people to verse. Now, sitting behind those pillars, it's going to force uh, Dr. Devastator and both of his captains to start coming at him. Now, with your Earthquake, you're going to want to try and plan out where you're going to be using these. I'm relocating around the bosses because I want to try and line up shots between... Dr. Devastator, the Captains, and the Rifleman. I want to make sure that I'm hitting every single one of them with all of my abilities. Use as much as I can. That way, whenever it's down to the last little bit, I don't have to worry about running around to kill off everyone else that's alive. Using Gravity Leap for a little bit of extra damage. You know, now you're down to a single target. Try and focus them out as much as you can. And there we go. Nice, good, easy run. And even if you are running two Earthquakes, you know, it's going to be minus about 300,000 damage every single seven seconds. But you can make up with it by swapping over to your secondary, putting a couple of critical hits into their head with whatever secondary you're using, if you're using a couple damaging abilities. Or you can even make up for it by using weakness on a gun and vulnerability. Stacking those two can get you the same damage effect that I'm running right now. Because versing captains, I have almost a 200% damage bonus against captains. Or entirely 100% bonus. Now, Captain Hunter, that trait, I have noticed that Captain Hunter actually stacks on top everything. So once the bleed is active, once everything else is active, it actually increases all that by 25%. So Captain Hunter is actually a lot stronger than what it says. So rather than hitting people for 300,000, we were hitting them for 600,000 because it's 25% more damage towards all, all elites. But it's a Category 2 buff, which means if we take 1,000% damage and we put a Category 2 buff on it, it's actually 1,250. So it's 
bonus damage is a really big increase and it's just absolutely fantastic and that's it if you guys enjoyed it leave a like comment subscribe uh seriously leave comments i'll try my best to get back to you guys as much as i can but other than that enjoy your day i hope that helps you guys get through boomtown